Good afternoon and welcome to the fourth video in which we configure the human resources shade parameters and we'll continue to do so until we are able to configure the human resources uh, completely and then we'll walk into the process. So if you haven't seen any of my videos in the past, do feel free to go through them and there's a lot of knowledge and a lot of things that I've shared that will help you get into this phase, get into the way you talk to a client and be able to communicate effectively what is available in the system. So today we're going to continue talking about the shared parameters and you could see this is the home page for finance and operation. And if I simply go into the human resource module, go into the shared parameters, and we have all these parameters that we've been talking about today, we're gonna to focus on the performance because we were talking about personnel action there's a detailed uh, video that I just created on the personal action. So do make sure that you go through it because it's very important to have these configured. And so we're going to move on to performance uh, parameter. And in performance, uh, you could see that you have, you can configure a performance review rating model. So basically, uh, if you have a client who does not have a performance review outside of the system or they would like to integrate that their performance review in, into the system you would need to configure a few things and these are very generic very simple and standard configuration so within the system if you want to configure the performance review then you need to have a rating model of course and then we'll talk a little bit about more things that are available from a review perspective uh, so in this case uh, if you see a drop down menu, these are the things that you know that are available that have been configured. But well, more or less, these are simply used when you when you as a manager is reviewing uh, reviewing a performance of your employee. Uh, so this is a defaulted value, uh, and but you can always change it, of course, when you're creating either a goal or you're or you're reviewing a skill set and you're rating yourself against it. But this is just a default value that would pop up if you first create a performance review. And then you want to make sure that, you know, if you want to include an employee rating and include the manager rating, and then you obviously use the weighted goal. So these parameters come in handy when you're actually creating a performance review. So we're going to talk about how that looks like, but from a generic standard perspective, we, you can either include or exclude the rating. So just to give you a glance of what, how the performance review works within finance and operation, as an employee, I can generate a performance review on my own, put in the information, relevant information in that form, and then send it out to my manager for review. And I also can rate myself against the rating that has been put in the system. And this is where that rating comes in. So this Boolean field basically tells you that you can rate yourself. As an employee, you can rate yourself and send that rating out for your manager to review in your performance review form. And same thing into in this Boolean field, the manager then ultimately rates you against what you have rated yourself. And then you send it back to the employee for them to review uh, on their end. And then at some point, of course, you sit down together to come up with a universal or a confined rating, which you mutually agree on, and then that will be submitted to the HR at some point. So that's the sort of like a high level process, how the performance review work. And then of course you can have a use weighted goals as well as part of the performance review. So you can embed that in there, uh, but it's not very, as sophisticated as you would like uh, the performance review to be, but uh, you can, you leverage the simplicity of uh, configuring the weighted goals and how that plays in a role with the performance review. So that's the configuration for performance. We're gonna go into the advanced access. So this is pretty cool stuff. This is something new. And you know these are configurations that will allow you to either restrict some form of information. And uh, in the first one, you're restricting access to a worker information. So a worker in, finance and operation is a shared uh, global uh, employee, you could say. So when you go into human resources, you go into workers, you would see all uh, employees across legal entities. Uh, in this case, 
if you want to restrict people by legal entity, then you would have to enable this Boolean field and then you can restrict them. But basically, whoever is in, employed in USMF, they can only see the USMF uh, employees. Whereas you can also enable the cross company compensation. Uh, so right now it is disabled. So if you were to enable it, then anybody can go into anybody's record, like at least if you have the access for it, and they can review and view their compensation. If you do not allow that, of course, then it's legal and it is specific. And same thing with the cross company leave view. So there is a calendar in the employee self service workspace, and you can view either your team's uh, calendar, leave of absence calendar, or you can view the cross company and then you can simply select all the employees or relevant employees that you would like to see. That can also be restricted for a specific set of users, but of course you can restrict that with the security rules as well. So with that, we're gonna finish up the video and we're gonna talk about financial dimensions and benefits management, which is a bigger topic uh, to discuss. So with that, I'll leave this video and then we're gonna talk about the financial dimensions in the next one.